Kyle, we've seen some interesting developments in China lately. A crackdown, a regulatory crackdown on the shadow banking system, but the way the Chinese government is going after it is by preventing the banks from making these investments, they, what are they called? Entrusted investments mm -hmm. that underpin what's called the WMP market, these wealth management products. You've been taking a close look at it. How serious do you think this is? I, Eric, I think that uh, when you look at the WMP market in China, the way you think about these products is they're basically levered money market funds with some with dubious assets, and um, they're basically asset liability mismatches, right? You have, they're buying a long-term asset with very short-term liabilities. That's ballooned in the last few years to 30 trillion yuan, or call it four trillion dollars. Imagine four trillion dollars worth of assets, uh, investments in these kinds of products. And what's happening is um, some of the longer-term assets um, aren't doing very well. And as soon as the liabilities have problems, meaning the depositors decide to not roll their liabilities, all hell breaks loose. And so think about this, four trillion on a banking sector of 34 trillion, in the U.S., our asset liability mismatches at the peak of our subprime greatness were 2% of the mm -hmm. system. So we're talking about more than 10% of their system. So here's the problem with a forced deleveraging, which is effectively what this amounts to. Um, it can often get out of hand. Mm. Does the, you know, does the, do you, I guess, are they going to blink? Yeah, I mean, it, as, as you can imagine, if you remember how in the U.S. how everything unraveled, uh, you know, as Warren Buffett famously said, you know, you, you see who's swimming naked when the tide goes out. Correct. Um, things got to be pretty um, dubious um, early on in some of these big mismatches. And what we're seeing now, we saw Minxing Bank just a few days ago say that they sold a three billion yuan, call it half a $500 million worth of WMP, and they actually never invested the money. It was just a ghost WMP. And so what's interesting about that is now you've seen in the last couple of days Anbong, who, as you know, bought the, the Waldorf and has and bought strategic hotels, and the life insurers have been raising money in China uh, by using these short-term liability products. Mm -hmm. That's how they've raised the money for these acquisitions. And so... Another asset liability on three, mismatch. Three hundred billion dollars, and so the Chinese insurance regulator was just detained and arrested for corruption, and now it's rumored that some things going on at Onbang. And so, what you start to see when liquidity dries up is all of a sudden people start going down, companies start having problems. This is the beginning of the Chinese credit crisis. We're seeing it. You believe that we're seeing it now? Sure. So what? What would? What? Because would, we've been we've been talking about the inflation of the bubble. Right. But you, but the timing's really hard, right? This is ten years in the making, and I'm not good enough, and very few people are uh, are adept enough to decide when it, when it exactly happens. But if one were to say that the system is running out of money, running out of cash, and it's too levered, what would you see happening? Well, one of the charts that I gave you is the chart on the interbank corridor. You would expect interbank lending rates to spike every now and then. And mm -hmm. in March, and the end of March, you saw the cleared interbank rates spike over 9% when the corridor top is 3.45. So what happens when you have a max levered system with interbank funding and, and your interbank rates spike from 3.5 to 9 and settle at 5? Well, if you're levered three or four times, it blows you up. And so what we're seeing now are spikes through the corridor, and that's, that's the evidence that liquidity so is a liquidity problem. So you can't declare it with certainty, but it feels to you, I'm just trying to get this, it feels to you like we're beginning to see the bursting of the credit bubble. Yes. I don't know how long it takes. Could take a while. Things typically unwind a little quicker on that they get put together. But, you know, think about the U.S. We had our first bumps in the road in February of 2007. Right. And um, we had... Uh, Full-blown credit crisis but we had, by we September didn't have Bear, of 2008. We didn't have Bear Stearns until, what, March, March of 2008? We had Lehman in, in um, September of 2008. So some, even, even a large unraveling takes a while. Um, how is it that... On the one hand, you can have a guy like Mark Mobius from Franklin Templeton, who is a China bull, say that this is overdone, this is overdue. 
this is a good thing, this crackdown on the shadow banking system, and at the same time, have someone like yourself, who has, let's call it, a bearish view on Chinese credit, talk about this as potentially the beginning of the end. Oh, I wouldn't say it's the end. Um, I really think, Eric, I just think that it's a cycle, and they're going to go through a credit cycle. And a credit cycle means they let it grow too big. They, they, right, they grew it too recklessly uh, and too quickly. Um, and so we're just going to see a restructuring of their banking system. That doesn't mean the end. So I agree with Mark on that. The, the degrees of severity of the decline are, are, I guess, open for debate. OK, but if there's going to be something of a crisis in the banking system, would you want to be long A shares? on the mainland market, which is what he's buying? Probably not. Probably not. And what's interesting is, if you've noticed, last night, you know, 4% declines in the, in the index. Um, what you're seeing is, it, with the insurance company problems with their liabilities, and the banking system's problem with WMP liabilities, what would you expect to see happen? You would expect to see liquidation of some of those assets. So you're seeing, uh, you're seeing a divergence between the A-share market and, let's say, the globe. Right? The globe's been running on a high of the French election. Mm -hmm. It's been running on better GDP prints uh, in Europe, uh, inflation prints in Europe. Tax and yet, reform here in America. And yet China's going the other way and people are scratching their head. Well, the narrative between, let's say, the public narrative of China's getting better and they're going to they're grow GDP a little faster and manufacturing's doing better, and the reality of their credit system are diametrically opposed to one another. You have corporate bond issuance was negative in the first quarter. You know, you can't grow M2 or the broad money at 12%, 13% while M0 is declining and corporate credit's contracting. So uh, as a macroeconomist, these things don't, they don't, uh, you can't square that circle. Of all the indicators you've, we've been discussing in the course of the past few minutes, which ones right now are most important to focus on? My own view is um, both cleared and uncleared interbank lending, right? If the whole market is wholesale funded, which is kind of what we're saying, and, and if, banks, is if banks stop trusting one another, which is what we're seeing, to, to, to your point, the entrusted loan market, the big policy banks are pulling back the entrusted loans to the other banks because they were keeping these WMPs off balance sheet, right? Um, so if they stop trusting one another and start pulling in their horns, well, then that's how it happens. So you look at the interbank corridor and watch, watch if rates spike. So far as I understand, for the most part, we've talked about this in the past, you've expressed your view on China through Asian currencies. Many of those currencies actually strengthened in the first quarter, the Hong Kong dollar weakened. Do you feel confident if this is, in fact, the beginning of the bursting of the Chinese credit bubble, that those positions are going to start to work out yeah. well? Without talking about what we do, because we shouldn't talk about these things, but I think more, more broadly, that's right. You look at the current, the currencies will be the ultimate arbiter of the credit system because what will the, what will the Chinese regulators do? What will the PBOC do? They'll expand their balance sheet. They'll recap the banks. They'll drop interest rates. They'll do everything that they're supposed to do to fix this. But what does that mean the Chinese currency's worth? That means it's worth a lot less than where it is today. Now, there's plenty of speculation and there has been for a long time that President Xi isn't going to let anything disorderly happen in China. Mm. If, in fact, that's true, is an orderly unwind of excess leverage in the Chinese system just as good for you in the long run? Yeah, I mean, look, whether it's good for me or anybody, this is going to happen, right? President Xi, look, he's there to make China great again. He's there to consolidate power. And the, 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 the 19th uh, National People's or Party's Congress is in um, November. So he'd like to hang on until November. Um, the question is, when you have a $34 trillion uh, credit system and you're juggling five or six balls at once, if one of the balls hits the ground, um, you're going to have a less orderly system. And so I don't know the answer to that other than get through November is what he's trying to do. One other question for you. How much of an X factor is North Korea? I think it's, North Korea is a big problem. I mean, we all know this, but um, you know, the, the, real, the real issue with North Korea is um, if, if it becomes more of a, an armed or kinetic conflict instead of uh, you know, blustery words or an economic conflict, um, how quickly does that translate into distress in the ASEAN, in the ASEAN region? And um, it will, it'll be fairly quickly if something goes wrong. And that, none of us want that to happen. Um, but 
it's it's a real risk. You were paying close attention to what's happening there. Oh, I mean, uh, look, the thing, the thing that I don't think people know uh, is, is the, the U.S. Defense Department uh, has been arming the DMZ for 60 years. And um, in our best case scenario, our war planners show that it'll be a million people dead in South Korea if we win and we preemptively strike. So this is something that no one wants to happen, including myself. I, I don't want anything negative to happen over there. But Kim Jong-un, you know, uh, is, is un unpredictable. And, and uh, if you've read all the books about him, he's about as crazy as they come. So um, that's a big question mark in the asset management world. Uh, you know, investing as a, as a fiduciary, it's a, real, it's a really hard um, situation to handicap.